Jazz line number one. In order to take full advantage of this workout, we will first analyze the line and then you will play a series of self-evaluating exercises viewing the lake from different perspectives. You can only go to the next exercise once the current one has been mastered in all 12 keys. This line works well over a dominant chord and is based on the Mixolydian scale. Remember, the whole point is not to memorize the line, but to teach our ears and hands to hear and say musical idioms that are part of the jazz language. Oh, and one more thing. Practicing licks is a workout, not improvisation. You do not want to play a rehearsed line when you are improvising and sound like a robot. Improvisation is about being in the moment and having a natural music conversation where you know what the other members of the group are talking about. Okay, let's get started. The line starts on the one, C in C7, and moves to the flat seventh, which is B flat. Here's your first challenge. Use the seven as a passing tone between one and flat seven, and play one, seven, flat seven in all keys. So this is a chromatic line. Over F7, it will be F, E, E flat. I loaded the dominant workout in Mapping Tonal Harmony Pro with one bar per chord, which goes around the circle of fifths. Practice challenge one until you can play along with the piano player in our demo. Okay, let's keep analyzing the line. So the next note is a sixth embellished by an upper neighboring tone. So we play six, go up a half step, and come back to six, then the five and the sharp eleventh. Notice that all these notes are part of the C mixolydian scale except for the sharp eleventh, which we can consider a target for practice purposes. So we can outline the first part as a descending line one, flat seven, six, five, sharp eleventh. So here's challenge two. Play this line in all 12 keys. We are ignoring the embellishment at this point. Remember, you are playing a descending mixolydian scale starting at the one and targeting the sharp 11th. So here's C seventh in red and here's F seventh in blue. Again, we will use a one bar dominant workout around the circle of fifths. See if you can play along. Now we will think on our next target note, which is the fifth, here. We are double approaching this note from below and above, sometimes called trapping the note. We are approaching chromatically from the sharp 11th and using the next note in the mixolydian scale from above, which is A. So here's challenge three. We are adding the approach to the fifth and then skipping down to the one as key reference. So a mixolydian downward line starting on one, targeting the sharp 11th and then double approach to the fifth. And here's an F. B is the sharp 11th. Then we trap C, which is the 5th, and we leap down to 1, which is F. We can now use 2 bar dominant workout over the circle of 5ths. Practice this line until you can play along with our demo. Next note we want to use as a target is a ninth or a two. So here's challenge number four. 
we will just approach the ninth or two from the one. In C is C to D, and in F is F to G. So we can go back to a one bar per core dominant workout. And here it is. Our next target is the third. We are approaching the third using a double chromatic approach from below and also trapping the note from above. We start on the ninth or two. Then there are two lines embedded in the approach. A chromatic line up from nine to three and a chromatic approach from the fourth down to three. This is sometimes called double trapping. So the target is a third and we start on the ninth. One line goes up chromatically and the other comes down. The actual shape of it is a leap up, leap down, and resolve. So here's challenge five. We'll start on the ninth and double approach the third trapping it. Then we will leap to the one as reference. And this is how it looks in F seventh. Here's the demo. Try to play along. Okay, last part of our line starts on the third, where we left off. Our target is now the one, and it does three, five, six, one. This is part of the pentatonic scale. And don't forget we were arriving at the third by a chromatic approach from below. So here's challenge six. We will consider two targets, the third and the one. We get to the one using the pentatonic scale starting on three, and we approach the third chromatically from below. And here is an F seventh, and here's the challenge. We've seen the entire lake, except for the embellishment with the neighboring tone. So it would be a good idea to simplify the embellishment for now, leaving out the neighboring tone which will give us two eighths. Here's challenge seven, the entire lake without the embellishment. Let's play it. Great, before we add the embellishment, let's take a look at the rhythm for the entire lick. So challenge eight is to play the entire lick using a chromatic descending line starting on the one. This is also a great exercise to incorporate rhythmic phrases that are part of the language. Here it is. That's it! We've analyzed and looked at the lick from different points of view, using and defining many concepts that are essential in the jazz language, such as scale degrees. One, three, five, six. 
flat 7, 7, 9, and sharp 11. Chord scales. We talked about mixo and pentatonic. Passing tones. We use the 7th as a passing tone between 1 and flat 7. Upper neighboring tones. The B flat above an A. Target tones. Sharp 11th, 9th, and 3rd. Approaches. Double approach, chromatic, triple, and the concept of trapping. And rhythm, using a chromatic descending line. So we are ready to play the entire lick. In the process, we've done lots of ear training and clarified all those concepts. Now it's time to play the entire lick. Let's do it. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye!